After Jesus returned to heaven, his disciples remained with the awesome task of taking the gospel to the whole world. Filled with the Holy Spirit, these men and women proclaimed the message they had received with boldness and power, reaching out to all corners of the then known world. But it was not without great opposition, first from the Jews, then from the Roman state. Many Christians were faithful to the point of death, suffering torture and humiliation from cheering onlookers at the Circus Maximus and Colosseum in Rome and throughout the empire. However, the blood of the martyrs only paved the way for the further spread of the gospel. After years of persecution by the Roman emperors, one of them, Constantine, professed conversion to Christianity in 312 AD. Now Christianity became popular, but it resulted in many pagan practices and symbols entering the church, particularly in Rome. The Bishop of Rome assumed more and more power and authority and began to oppose and oppress all who recognized Jesus alone as the head of the church and who accepted the Bible alone as the supreme authority. To escape this increasing persecution, God's true people withdrew to the wilderness areas of Europe. In northern Italy, the Waldenses took refuge in the mountains. While many were slain, the light continued to shine in the darkness. God was still in control, and he began to raise up men like Wycliffe, Huss, Tyndale, Luther, Calvin and Zwingli to stand for his truth. They stood for the Bible alone, faith alone and Christ alone. In 1798, in fulfillment of Bible prophecy in the book of Daniel, the religious and political supremacy of the Roman Church was temporarily reduced when General Berthier removed Pope Pius VI from his throne. Consequently, in the decades that followed, there arose a great awakening of interest in the prophecies of Daniel, and many were convinced Jesus was soon to return. In the United States, the Baptist preacher William Miller was joined by hundreds of other preachers in their expectation of the return of Jesus in 1844. However, when Christ did not return in 1844, further Bible study led a small group to discover that Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary was an explanation for their great disappointment. They discovered that the Bible taught that the seventh day was the Sabbath that Jesus had set aside for his people. Slowly they came to understand that their mission was to preach the three angels' messages of Revelation 14. Their goal as Seventh-day Adventists was to preach with power the everlasting gospel and to prepare the world for Christ's return. More than 160 years have now passed, years that have brought two world wars, numerous military campaigns, financial depressions, the rise of atheism and secularism, as well as a booming world population with natural disasters increasing in frequency and intensity. Today, the church's mission and message is more relevant and urgent than ever in its history. Jesus is coming soon, and the world must be warned. Prepare to meet your God.